Advanced Functions 1.7 Exploring Operations with Functions. This is the last section of Chapter 1 and that means we're uh, ready to give you a practice test which hopefully I can find in some of my older files. Um, so stay tuned. Also I notice that about 66% of the people who are viewing my videos are not subscribers. So if you are enjoying them, please subscribe so I know how many people out there are actually uh, taking part in the little lessons that I'm posting for you. So today, if two functions have the same domain, now I underline that because the textbook isn't really, well, it's clear that it has to be the same domain, but they don't do enough examples, I think. Um, they can be added, subtracted, or multiplied to get a new function on that shared domain. So the importance of it being shared here matters when you have um, functions that don't overlap. So the first example I'm going to show you, everything does overlap. So you can look at the set of coordinates that we have here. They both have an x coordinate of 1, 2, 3, and 4. So that means if I wanted to add these two functions together, all I have to do is add the y coordinates. So, for instance, what I'm doing here is I have, say, the point 1, 3, which would be here, and I have the point 1, 5, which would be the other coordinate here, so 3, 4, 5, so this one. And what I'm doing is I'm adding the heights of these two functions to get another function. So that would be 5 plus 3, 6, 7, 8, so this would be the new coordinate. Okay, so I'm just adding their heights. So for f at x plus g at x, we have to have all these different little coordinates. We're going to just add only the y's, okay, because I'm only adding the height here. So this would have been 8 here, just to get some 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so this, this is f at x plus g at x, gives me this value here. So I'm going to write it as a set of coordinates. So all I have to do for each of these is add the coordinates for the y's. 2, 8, 3, 9, and 4, 19. So you could go back. I'll do, I'll do one more. I'll do the 3. So let's do, we have 3 and 7. That's here. And I'm adding to that 3, 2, which was my g at x function. 3, 2. And I'm getting the new point, 3, 9. Okay, so that's all you're going to do. You're just going to add those things. You could also multiply them. You could subtract them. But you can't divide them. It's the only thing you don't do. And you won't be asked to. So you don't have to think about that. Okay, so here, that's my answer. Simple, right? So you're given coordinates, you just find the ones that are the same. So here's another example. What if I asked you for fg? That means f times g, right? Or sometimes you might see it as f at x dot g at x. That means times it. Okay, so first of all, I have to look to see if I can work with these coordinates and multiply them together. So um, 0, 1. Oh, I, I only have a 0 here, so that one's out of the picture. I don't have a coordinate starting with 2 here. This one doesn't have an x coordinate of 2, so that one's gone. So I have these two. Um, I don't have a 4 down in this one, so that one's out, and this one's out. So that's all you have to do. Like, just get rid of the ones where you don't have the same x coordinates, and then all you have to do is multiply the y coordinates. So my solution my domain for f at g is just going to be 3, 5. That's it. Now, f g, f times g, is going to be 3, and 7 times 2 is 14. And the last one, 5, and 6 times 2 is 12. And that's your answer. Stop right there. Okay? So that's fine when you have just a set of points. And now let's take a look at if we have two functions. So this example has a function minus x plus 5 and x squared minus 1. So you can see we have a linear function. We're multiplying it by a quadratic function. So the question is, what is f at x times g at x? 
Well, that would just be this, right? Minus x plus 5 times x squared minus 1. So then all I have to do is go through and expand this. It's just a little binomial expansion. So minus x times x squared would be minus x cubed. And then I'd have plus an x, plus 5x squared, and minus 5. And if you're a good student, you're going to reorganize that in descending order of exponents. Right. Okay, so that's what f at x times g at x is, algebraically. Now, the question also asks you to sketch this new function. So, you didn't sketch cubic functions in grade 11, but there are some really easy things to do, uh, little tricks to graph cubic functions. But first we're going to do it like you don't know anything about what a cubic function is. So we're going to figure out what is f at x at each of these coordinates, what is g at x, and then we're just going to multiply like these are, this is the height, right? These are your y coordinates when I do this work. So I'm going to put in here minus minus 3, so 3 plus 5 is 8, and 2 plus 5 is 7, and 1 plus 5 is 6, and 0 plus 5 is 5, and then we have 4, and then we have 3, and then we have 2, and then we have 1, and then we have 0, right? Just plugging it in to this equation here, which was for minus x plus 5. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for g at x. So minus 3, minus 3 squared is 9, minus 1 is 8, and 4 minus 1 is 3, and 1 minus 1 is 0, and 0 minus 1 is minus 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So you can see this is a quadratic, um, 15 and 24, right? Okay, so now what's f? f at x times g at x. So that just means I have to multiply these two together to get the new function. So the coordinate, so this is going to be 64. Let's do the multiplication. 21, 0, minus 5, 0, 9, 16, 15, and 0. Now I went out to 5 here for a very particular reason, and that is you can see that this would be a 0 for the function or where it's going to cross the x-axis. Now you probably could have figured that out if you had started by saying, okay, this is minus x plus 5, and I'm multiplying it by x squared minus 1, and that factors, remember, you've got to know all your factoring, these skills are always important. And if I asked you, what are the zeros of this function, you'd say, what makes each of these brackets equal to 0? So x equals, this would be 5, right, 5 and minus 1, and positive 1. Whoops. Those are the zeros of your function, right? That's where it's going to cross the x-axis. So that becomes important when you're sketching cubic functions a little bit later on. And we just did this little table of values so that we could see what we had. Okay, so let's look at what the equation looked like to start with. So minus x plus 5, that's a linear function. The y-intercept is 5 and the slope is negative 1. So it's going to be pretty pretty tight here, right? Where is it going to go through 0 and x is 0, y is 5, and x is 5 and y is 0. So something like this. Okay, so that's my line, minus x plus 5. That's f at x. Okay, and the other function, minus x squared, or x squared minus 1. So minus 1, that means it's going to be, I didn't make a lot of room here for it. So it's going to be a quadratic. It's going to go through 1 and 0, 0 and 1. So it's going to go like this. Oops. So something like that. And then finally, f at x times g at x. Well, I have all these coordinates that I found. So we could plot them, minus 3, let's get a nice pretty pink color here, minus 3 and 64. So right, this is the coordinates of the new function, f at x times g at x, minus 3 and 64, so it's about here, minus 2 and 21 is about here, minus 1 and 0, okay, we said that was a 0 for the function, so that's good, 0 and minus 5. So it would be about here. 
and then we had 1 and 0, we had 2 and 9, it's about there, 2 and 9, 3 and 16, so it's 10, 20, so 16 is about here, 4 and 15, so it's coming back down now, and 5 and 0. So my function's going like this, like this, and like this. So that's a cubic function. Notice that it has two turning points. It goes like this. So if you think back to maybe what you know about a cubic function, if I graphed y equals x cubed, which is the most basic, it's going to look like this, right? So this is a cubed root. So x cubed, three zeros here. Um, when you have a cubic function, it can have three zeros, like a quadratic has two, a cubic has three. And notice how this is, this would be y equals x cubed. So it's going in a positive direction, just like a line, positive slope line. But this is a negative cubic function. So it's going to go in the other direction. That's why it's coming this way. If I do a line through these points, it's going downhill instead of uphill. And it has three zeros. It can't have more. It could have two. How could it have two zeros? Watch. One, two. Okay, so I have a double root and a single root. Or it can have a triple root or it have three single roots. We'll get into a lot of that later. Okay, so that's what... Um, this section on working with functions, multiplying, adding, subtract. Remember that you have to have the same domain. Oh, and yes, we should probably mention that, that both of these functions, the domain was x is an element of real numbers, right? x is an element of real numbers. They're polynomial functions. So there's no restriction. So they're fair game. This function could be multiplied um, to get this cubic function. And that's it for chapter one. Hope uh, you've enjoyed it. And again, please subscribe if you haven't. Bye for now.